Almost all people said that criminal justice reform would never pass. But we came together as a group. We worked across party lines, and we got it done. I'm truly humbled. I'm grateful. I'm thankful. Uh, Jared, the President, I'm thankful that you were insisting about getting this bill passed. It's an experience that I never forget. Two months ago, I was in a, in a prison cell, and I'm in the White House. That's, <laughs> that's, that's continue to make America great again. <laughs> Wow, that celebration just hours ago at the White House for the First Step Act, the bipartisan criminal justice reform just passed by Congress in December. It was a personal mission for my next guest. Today, I sat down exclusively with the president's son-in-law, senior advisor Jared Kushner, to talk about that law, his reaction to the Mueller report, new questions about his security clearance, and a lot more. Jared, it's great to have you with us. Thanks for joining us. You don't do a lot of interviews, so we're really happy about that. Thank you. It's my pleasure to be here. Uh, so you have a big event that we're going to get to, the First Step Act, a big celebration, a bipartisan celebration in the White House, which is great because I don't think we have enough of those. We're going to get to that because it's a historic day in many ways, but we have to get to some of the news of the day first. And the left is going crazy about the security clearance issue. And a whistleblower from the White House has now given a private interview on Capitol Hill to Democrats, and she says that 25 individuals were able to leapfrog over the, uh, the career people's concerns about security clearances, and they received security clearances, in her view, improperly. What's your reaction to that? Yeah, well, I can't comment for the White House's process, but what I can say is that over the last two years that I've been here, I've been accused of all different types of things, and uh, all of those things have turned out to be false. Uh, we've had a lot of crazy accusations, like that we colluded with Russia. Uh, I complied with all the different investigations, whether it be the Senate, the House, uh, the special counsel. I've sat for nearly 20 hours of interviews uh, with them. Uh, when I came to Washington, I had a very successful business career. Uh, I had extensive holdings. I disclosed all my holdings to the uh, Office of Government Ethics, and what I did with that is they told me what to divest, what to keep, what rules to follow. She says there were grave concerns. She has grave concerns about potential national security implications. Are, are, do you pose a grave national security <laughs> concern to the country, Jared Kushner? Uh, look, I, I can say that in the White House, uh, I work with some phenomenal people, and I think over the last two years, the president's done a phenomenal job of identifying what are our national security priorities. He's had a great team in place that are helping implement it, and I hope I've played a good part in pushing those uh, objectives forward. And I think because of the president's leadership, uh, the world is safer today. So Do you get the sense that the Democrats keep moving the goalposts on this? I mean, it, it, it strikes me as interesting that this comes out today after Mueller fizzles. Yeah, well, what I learned during the campaign is that there's a big difference between uh, what people in America care about and what people in Washington or in the media care about. When you think about the First Step Act, I was reading back on what CNN was saying about it after it passed. Mm -hmm. And it was like they couldn't believe that Donald Trump would do something that would help disadvantaged people, people who've made big mistakes, some of them, uh, criminal mistakes. And they, it's almost like they didn't want to believe it could ever happen. Does that, does that disappoint you? Because even when something that should be bipartisan is still viewed in a negative light, odd. When he was approached with this issue and he saw how a lot of people leaving prison uh, didn't have uh, the skill set and didn't have had so many obstacles preventing them from getting back on a path, uh, he said, of course, that's why they'll go back and commit more crimes. So he thought it was good for public safety and also for these people to figure out how do we invest the resources to help them have a better chance at succeeding. And that's something he did because he's, I think, a very competent uh, executive, but it's also something he did because he has a big heart. How much of it was because of your dad and what your, your dad went to prison? He uh, was convicted. He served time. Did, what does he say about these kinds of issues with you? Uh, well, that was a big part. I mean, that was why I was exposed to the issue. Yeah. And had I just come in as, as a government employee with, you know, hearing from the top down about what a great job they were doing, I probably would have believed it. But there's so much more that we can be doing. And my experience in prison uh, with my family situation was uh, I met a lot of uh, different families, a lot of people who, a lot of them were good people. They just made a mistake. And uh, the toll that it, uh, that it paid on, that, that, that it weighed on them and on their families was very disproportionate. Where is the president's thinking on the border closing? He's sent out a lot of interesting tweets about closing the border. Where is he on that? 
Well, I think the president's definitely made uh, increased awareness to the issue. I think he's weighing all of his options, which is something the president pressuring does. Mexico. Is this all for to, to pressure Mexico? No, I think it's to pressure everybody. This is something that needs a solution. One of the things I love about the president is he doesn't let people hide from problems. You know, when there's a problem, he makes people confront the problem, and uh, he's very creative about ways that he'll look to find uh, to find a solution. Are so, you going to get the USMCA passed through Congress? So I think it's moving very steadily uh, to to craft the deal. Obviously, we have to give a lot of pr uh, credit to the president for creating the conditions for us to negotiate the deal, but uh, I have to give a lot of credit to Ambassador Lighthizer, who really did a brilliant job, not only in negotiating the deal, but also in terms of architecting what kind of deal he thought would appeal to all the different constituents. And what we're seeing now with the deal uh, is that it's something that really is a world-class trade agreement. It's great for our farmers, great for American workers, great for industry, great for technology, and it's all these things that will allow America to continue to be independent. Why are they still trashing this deal? I mean, David Nora, I think it was, on, I think we have the soundbite, uh, on MSNBC is an anchor reporter there. This is what he just said, I think, the last couple of days about the USMCA. Mm -hmm. Let's watch. Talking about the president's seeming inability to see humanity, he is very easily able to see the economics of, of stories like this one. And you look at what's happened with the U.S.-Mexico-Canada trade deal, the new NAFTA. It's fallen apart. Use the president's Twitter feed as a guide here. That may very well be what spurred the president to make this threat. He was talking about closing the border there. He, he brought up the close the border issue because the USMCA is, quote, falling apart. Is there any truth to that? No, not at all. The, the feature that I love that people don't talk about is that we built in a 16-year sunset, which uh, I was always, I always thought about the fact that if you've got uh, a great asset, you don't want to sell the asset. We would always sell our market access. Yeah. What we do here is we really uh, lease our market access. And then what we do is every six years, we have a fair market value renewal so that we can rebalance. Um, you were instrumental in the president's uh, run in 2016. What are you seeing in this Democrat field? Any um, any interesting uh, characters, more some more than others that you'd like to run against? When you look to 2020, what we're focused on is figuring out how do we, you know, keep building the the best way possible. The president's going to have a fabulous campaign. I think he's got the right policies, and I think he's got the country on the right track. And I think that a lot of the different policies that I see, a lot of these Democrats uh, advocating for or offering, uh, I don't think that's where the country Socialism? is. Socialism? Uh, I don't think that's where the country is. One statistic that I found uh, very pleasing is that uh, more of the, the, in Florida, they passed a law where uh, former felons can now vote. We've had more ex-felons uh, register, register as Republicans and Democrats, and I think they see the reforms. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You've had more felons, re ex-felons register as Republicans and Democrats? That, that's the data that I've seen, and I think that will surprise a lot of people when they see uh, the new coalition that President Trump is building for what the Republican Party has the potential to be.